This is a video for Finance 303 with Professor Dow, and I'm Jim Dow. It begins the part of the course that covers the role of finance in a business plan. In this video, we'll provide an overview of the different financial parts of a business plan. In later videos, we'll look at some of the parts more closely. Every business should have a plan. A business plan should have explicit goals so that the company knows what it wants to achieve and can evaluate whether it is achieving it. It also should have an explicit strategy for achieving those goals. For small businesses, the business plan will focus more on the operational details of the company and practical issues such as work and capital management. For large companies, strategic issues will be more important. In this presentation, we'll focus more on small businesses and leave large company capital structure questions for a later lecture. It is helpful for a business to have a written business plan. First, a business plan serves as a checklist to make sure you've thought about all aspects of the business, including the financials and long-term strategy. In addition, if you're looking for outside investors, they'll want to see a detailed financial plan that shows how you generate enough money in the future to generate a return on their investment. For example, if you were to go to a bank, it would be helpful if you had a plan that could justify why you needed the loan and how you would be able to pay the loan back in the future. A business plan is typically split into three or four major parts. The first part will provide an overview of the company, the track record of the management, and a detailed description of the operations of the company and the products or services it is selling. The plan will also have a market analysis which identifies the competitors and the direction the market might take in the future. The strategic plan will identify the strengths and weaknesses of the company, along with opportunities and threats, and then the actions the company will take to ensure it has a strong market position. Finally, the plan will have both historical financial data and projections for the future. In this class, we will only talk about the financial parts of the business plan. But all the parts are important and will be covered in non-finance classes. The financial plan will generally provide three kinds of information. Historical financial statements, estimates of what the financial statements will look like in the future, known as pro forma financial statements, and some analysis of the financial information including appropriate financial ratios. You should be familiar with financial statements from your financial accounting class and we will discuss the use of financial ratios in a later presentation. It's important to recognize that the financial part of a business plan is designed to provide answers to specific questions. For example, if you are presenting your business plan to a bank in order to get a loan, the bank will want to know how much you want to borrow, and they want to see evidence that your business will be able to generate enough money to repay the loan in the future. This information should be clearly presented in your financial plan. Pro forma financial statements are projections of what will happen in the future. They have the same form as historical financial statements, but the numbers are estimates made by the company. Forecasting the future is complicated, so forecasts will never be perfect, but they should be reasonable and informed estimates of what the company thinks will happen. Potential investors may challenge the forecast, so the company should be able to show how they derive the numbers and be able to defend their assumptions. As part of this, the assumption used should clearly be shown as part of the pro forma financial statements. Forecasts of the future are always dependent on a number of assumptions, and these assumptions are never certain. Sensitivity analysis is the practice of seeing how your conclusions are affected if you change your assumptions. For example, if you constructed your financial statements assuming that sales are going to grow by 10% per year, it would be useful to know what would happen if sales only grew by 5%. If the company can show that they still would be able to make their interest payments with 5% growth, it would make investors more confident about lending them money. One of the most important items in the financial plan is past and expected future capital spending. 
dollar amounts would be summarized on the balance sheet, but depending on the business, there may also be more detailed descriptions of capital expenses. The plan would lay out how much would be spent and when the spending would occur. Outside investors would want to examine the plan to make sure you're not trying to raise more money than you need. After all, the more money you raise now, the more you'll have to come up with to repay the investors in the future. Depending on the business, they'll also want to be sure that the company is raising enough money so it doesn't find itself short and having to return to investors to ask for more. In some situations, such as with venture capital, companies are funded in stages with the company given enough money to prove itself, and once it does that, it can return to the same investors to get additional funds to finance further growth. One of the things that investors will look at is how the funds are raised. Will the company mostly be borrowing money, or is it looking for equity investors? For small businesses, outside investors will want the owner to make a significant investment in the company with their own money to have skin in the game. In this way, the owner has an incentive to work hard to make the company successful, because if the company fails, they'll lose their own money in addition to the investor's money. The plan will also want to show how much of the funding for the company will come out of bootstrapping, that is, using income generated by the company to fund future expansion. Part of the purpose of a financial plan is to check for the reasonableness of the assumptions. In this case, is it likely that the firm will be able to generate enough cash early on to fund needed investment in the future, or could it find itself short? The pro forma income statement will include forecasts of sales, revenue, costs, and earnings. For investors, the bottom line is the amount of future earnings, as that will determine whether their investment in the company can provide an acceptable return, or in the case of a bank loan, whether the company will be able to repay the loan. Even though earnings are the bottom line, Investors will look closely at the assumptions the plan makes about sales, revenue, and cost, as these together will determine earnings. Business owners tend to be optimistic about the amount of sales and revenue, and so the business plan should provide a justification of the numbers used and some analysis of what would happen if sales turned out to be lower than expected. Working capital is the money used to support the day-to-day -day operations of the business. For example, a company may have to pay cash up front to buy materials to manufacture their product before they sell it. If the company offers its customers credit, they may not receive the proceeds of their sales until sometime after the sale. A startup business might also need cash to pay employees early on before the company becomes a stable business that can generate enough cash on its own. In addition to asking for money to fund capital purchases, a new company would need investors to provide funds for working capital. The amount of funds needed will be determined by the cash budget. This estimates the cash inflows and outflows on a monthly, weekly, or daily basis. The difference between cash outflows and inflows would determine the necessary working capital. The cash conversion cycle follows the operations of the business from the acquisition and holding of inventory through sales and finally to the collection of payments. Small businesses especially should show in some detail how they will efficiently manage inventory and the cash conversion cycle to avoid requiring excess working capital. This will be discussed in more detail in a later presentation. Financial ratios are a way of summarizing large amounts of financial information and putting them in context by expressing one value relative to another. For example, saying that a company has annual interest costs of $200,000 doesn't tell us very much in itself. Expressing interest costs relative to earnings is better since earning measures the company's ability to pay those interest costs. A 200,000 interest expense is not much for a company with earnings of $20 million, 
but would be a serious problem for a company with earnings of $150,000. A financial plan will typically include a few key financial ratios to provide some analysis of the company's financial situation. We will study financial ratios in detail in a later video.